Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Futurum Tech Webcast. I'm your host, Ron Westfall, Research Director and Senior Analyst at Futurum Research. And we're truly excited about this one as we have Amr Hader from Marvell today. And we're going to talk about a truly hot topic, and that is security. As security dominated the hot headlines this summer, in fact, so much so that we can call the summer of 2022 the summer of security. And so I believe we have excellent timing. And with that, Amr, tell us about yourself, your background, and your role at Marvell. Hi, Ron. It's really a pleasure to be on the episode today. So I started my career at Cavium. Uh, Cavium was a company that was founded way back in 2001 as a security processor company. Cavium was acquired by Marvell, but before uh, it getting acquired, I had left Cavium. And now I'm very excited to be back at Marvell uh, running the security business unit. That's great. And it's wonderful to have you on today. And that's especially because we're shining the spotlight on one key aspect of security. And that is the hardware security module, also known as HSM. And with that, what is HSM and why is it so important to the security ecosystem? So HSM stands for Hardware Security Module. HSMs were created way back in 1972 by Muhammad Atala. Muhammad figured that uh, the security of encryption is dependent on protecting the encryption key. If the encryption key is lost, the security is lost. So Muhammad created this uh, concept of a box of keys, which was, of course, later named HSM, Hardware Security Module. And this has become such a, a popular way to protect encryption keys that the U.S. government created a standard around this called uh, uh, the FIPS-140, uh, FIPS-140. And now uh, it has different versions. The latest version was FIPS-140-2. Uh, which is just being retired. And now there's FIPS 140-3, which will be the new government standard for protecting encryption keys in hardware. Uh, again, that's called a hardware security module. Yeah, I imagine banks would be the heavy users of HSM, particularly for example, credit card processing, something that most people use on a daily basis. And they don't realize that HSM is playing a vital role in protecting those uh, credit card transactions. And so that kind of uh, brings up a big question. If it's so vital and important, how come there's not broader adoption of HSM? You know, what are some of the concerns and issues in terms of getting HSM to uh, a broader implementation? You know, oh, what a great question. So I'd like to use another analogy here um, regarding regulation, right? So for example, uh, until 1968, seat belts were not required by law, but they were still a great idea. You can watch some old movies and you'll see young kids hanging out in the front uh, seat of a car with no seat belt, forget airbags, right? Until 1968, when the government mandated that everyone needs to wear a seat belt, did it become widely used. Now, today, HSMs are only regulated or required in certain markets, for example, some certain government applications and the payment industry, right? But we see regulation coming that will expand the requirement of using HSMs in more markets. That's number one, uh, that we see uh, HSMs are gonna be more broadly used. The second uh, trend that we see here is that HSMs were quite difficult to use. I mean, let me go back to that analogy of using a, uh, putting your password on a post-it and putting on it on your computer. I mean, that's the easiest thing to do, right? You just put your password right there in front of the computer, everyone can come and use it, but it doesn't add security. Now, imagine taking that post-it and put it in a safe. That's quite more difficult. You actually have to go to the safe, you have to enter a pin to open the safe, then you have to look at it, and you have to put it back in. That was how HSMs uh, were used in the enterprise. You had to buy a separate appliance. You had to maybe buy multiple appliances to provide hardware availability and then uh, high availability. 
And then you needed to have detail, uh, expert staff to implement, operate, and manage those HSMs. And it was quite expensive. And each of these HSMs could cost forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000. Now, there's a huge trend in the HSM market. You can use an HSM in the cloud, and any developer with just a couple API calls can store their application encryption key uh, right into the uh, HSM for just a couple dollars an hour. That's a huge shift. So the second trend is using uh, cloud HSMs or HSMs as a service to provide convenience. And so the two trends I talked about to just recap, first is regulation and requirement. That's how we see HSMs growing. And the second is the convenience. So you'll see more applications using HSMs, which previously are, are not regulated by industry or, or by the government, but want to go towards the best practice because it's just more convenient and easier. Is that? Well, that, that makes sense, Amr. In fact, I think it really uh, brings up the opportunity to talk about these are real challenges and they're being addressed and the cloud is playing an integral role in that. And so naturally, we're wondering, what does Marvell bring to the table to help this along? How does Marvell enable customers to optimize the cloud in order to make their HSM capabilities all the more powerful? So HSM as a service is being offered by pretty much all the major cloud providers, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Amazon, Google, Oracle, Microsoft, uh, and, and others uh, are offering cloud or HSMs as a service uh, in the cloud. And so to perform or to create that service, what the cloud hyperscalers or the cloud and the hyperscalers need are high performance processing HSMs mm -hmm. with virtualization and secure partitioning because they need to take one HSM, uh, slice it into multiple HSMs, and then sell or resell each HSM as a service with metering. This is what's happened in the compute and storage space. Today, if you want to go and get a, you know, a, a, a server, uh, no one buys a server, you just go to the cloud and say, I want a portion of a server, or I want the entire server dedicated to myself, and you pay for that. So for similarly, for the H to offer HSM as a service, the cloud providers needed this high performance virtualized HSM. And that is what Marvell has brought to the market. We were the industry setting standard uh, for providing uh, HSMs with multiple partitions and high performance high performance uh, encryption perform uh, encryption that is a that has allowed hyperscalers and cloud providers to build HSMs as a service. Oh, well, that's uh, I think vital. I think that's really bringing uh, to the forefront why H HSM capabilities are vital to enabling security on any level. And so uh, with that in mind, uh, yeah, please uh, provide uh, those other uh, classes of example, Amr. Yeah. So another one would be an example of enterprise, protecting their own internal data. So for example, enterprises need to protect or secure their own data from either internal threats or external threats. And to do that, they need to protect the keys that encrypt the data. Now, where do they keep these keys? I mentioned earlier, many, some, some practices say you just keep the keys in a database or you'll keep the keys in some type of software application. Uh, but that's not the, the gold standard for protecting your encryption keys. The gold standard is let's, uh, you take those keys and you create them inside the HSM. So they never leave the hardware security module boundary or security boundary. And in some cases, the, the key actually never leaves the HSM. You send data to the HSM, encrypt, decrypt there inside the HSM. And then uh, that way the key is never comp can never be compromised because it never leaves the security boundary. So that's another uh, uh, way where enterprises will use HSMs to uh, increase their level of security by keeping the keys inside the HSM boundary. Another 
area that is actually regulated by industry is the banking and the credit card transaction area. And credit card transaction processing, uh, HSMs are required to process uh, every swipe or every purchase you're making or every credit card that's being issued will be issued through uh, an HSM. So, and that's an entire industry that uses uh, HSMs. Now, these HSMs, like I mentioned, were previously used uh, on-prem, but we see a massive transition moving to the cloud uh, with more and more applications being hosted in the cloud. It's just natural that they'll be using uh, HSMs in the cloud uh, as opposed to keeping them on-prem. Yeah, the cloud, that's definitely going to be instrumental in being able to take advantage of these HSM capabilities. In fact, what are the technical requirements uh, to enable HSM on the cloud uh, on an optimized basis? What is Marvell bringing solution-wise to enable uh, customers to really take advantage of uh, HSM as a service across the cloud environments? Ron, to enable the cloud, and HSM as a service, Marvell provides the industry-leading PCI adapters. These are PCI Express cards that are NIST, FIPS certified, and are and that can be plugged into servers. The PCI Express card provides the best performance per dollar, performance per watt, and performance density available in the market along with a software development kit that enables hyperscalers and enterprises to build an HSM as a service for their external and internal users. So Amr, you mentioned internal customers and external customers. What does that entail? What are these different types of environments that you're referring to? Ron, thanks for asking that question. There are um, hyperscalers that are building HSM as a service for the public cloud. So that means any developer can connect to uh, one of the hyperscaler cloud service and start using an HSM. That's what I mean by external customers. Now, there are many enterprises that want to create a private cloud and with HSMs and offer HSM as a service to their internal customers. For example, a large social site that wants to generate keys internal for their internal consumption and store encryption keys for their internal consumption, that would be uh, those are the folks I call internal customers. But again, it's the same process that, for example, a large bank would want to create an internal HSM as a service that's going to service their internal customers for folks who are maybe issuing credit cards or doing uh, credit card provisioning or uh, transaction processing. That, that would be uh, an internal customer versus an external customer. And that sets up my next question. There is this exciting announcement coming out from Arvell about Liquid Security 2. What is this about? What can folks expect from this announcement? We're really excited. Uh, about launching our brand new Liquid Security 2 HSM family. Our existing product family called Liquid Security 1 was announced over four years ago. So you can imagine with this new processor family, we've improved the performance and performance density by leaps and bounds. Our asymmetric encryption performance has improved by 10x over LS1 for elliptical curve cryptography. And we've improved our bulk encryption by over 3x for AES. And that sounds very exciting, Amr. In fact, we all want to know what is this going to enable in terms of new capabilities, new markets, uh, new applications, and so forth. Uh, what is Mar Marvell enabling in this regard? Uh, Ron, our LS2 is helping hyperscalers and enterprises to create HSMs as a service that improve convenience, have higher performance and lower cost. What this will do is enable more and more application and application developers to utilize the gold standard 
of protecting their encryption keys in HSMs. If we move to a world where all encryption keys are stored in hardware, the world will be a safer place. So LS2 is empowering our customers to make the world a safer place. And that's a high note, Amr. That I think is something that will definitely encourage broader adoption of HSM technology across the entire security ecosystem. From my view, uh, Marvell's Liquid Security 2 is bringing the breakthroughs and innovation needed to make the world a truly safer place. And with that, thank you everybody for joining today's webcast and have a great secure day. Good day all.